All right, welcome to my Power World weapon tier list. Today we're gonna to be going over all these weapons. I currently have about 300 hours in this game. So to say that I've been playing it a bit is an understatement. All right, starting out, we're going with the Torch. So the Torch is an easy S tier in my opinion. The reason why I say that is because it applies burning and burning is a status effect in which it does max health damage or it does damage based on the palace level. I'm not quite sure, but long story short, does really good damage no matter what level the pal is also it increases your capture rate meaning if you uh, smack something like three times with this thing and then you go for a capture you'll have a pretty significant boost to your capture rate for that capture also it helps with temperature as well so it's got many uses both combat and non-combat related so in my opinion easy s tier for me next up we have the club this is literally nothing special. It does 25 damage. The torch does 10. It's better than your fist, but you'll probably get rid of this within like 10 minutes. So it's just kind of whatever, man. Same thing with the bat. The bat's slightly better. It does 50 damage compared to the 25 of the club. But I personally do not like the range of these things. And I would like to use the spears more. And speaking of spears, I think that that's where our first spear comes into play which is the stone spear. I think that this is a C tier. It does 35 damage and it's not insane in terms of damage, but I do like the amount of range that it gives you. And it makes me feel a little bit more safe instead of having to whack things at point blank, which is a little bit more spooky as you get uh, later into the game. So personally, that's my vote. Next up, we have some bows. So this one is just the normal bow. For me, I think that this is a nice little C tier. It's not bad, not great. The main use that I use this for though is going to be basically making things aggressive towards me, like starting a fight, because there's certain things like Mopakas or Lift Monks that just constantly run away. And trying to chase them down, it's really hard to catch up to them and then hit them. And it's just, it just saves you time. Also, it doesn't even do bad damage. So personally, I think it's pretty good. Also, it's kind of a must have for lift monks because lift monks do not fight you from my understanding. They only run away. So unless you want to chase a lift monk for like literally a minute just to get him low and then try to capture him, this is the best way to go. Next up, we have the triple shot bow. Very simple. It does more damage. It fires three shots for the price of one. And it's just a good deal in my opinion. Like the damage that it does is... 40 compared to 65 so 65 on the old bow but 40 on the three shot but i'm pretty sure that obviously you're firing three arrows so you're, you're more at 120 compared to the 65 of the old bow so it is an upgrade in all regards and you just get more bang for your buck in my opinion so overall really good deal then we have some weird ones the weird ones are the fire bow and the poison bow now i think that these are really good the problem though is we are in a stage of the game where you're not currently able to farm flame organs or poison organs uh venom glands very efficiently so that's why i think that these get a slight downgrade uh in terms of rating for me because you don't have money during this period of time and you don't have a flame bell to farm you uh flame organs and so forth so in theory, these are really good, but I don't think it's realistic because you get five arrows, five poison or uh, fire arrows for every organ that you have. And that's not the best ratio in my opinion. I'm sure if you like dedicated yourself, it'd probably be pretty good. But the main thing that you're looking for is the status effect and it's good, but it's just not at the stage of the game where I feel like you can really use it. And uh, yeah, that's basically it. That's the main problem is that you just can't use it at this stage of the game very effectively. Next up, we'll do the metal spear. The metal spear is basically the same as these. It's slightly better than the bow, but it does, I believe what it is, 80 damage, if I'm not mistaken. Yes, it does 80 damage. So it is uh, about 50 better than the normal spear. It does have the range, which is nice. But overall, I wouldn't say it's anything crazy. 
then we have the first crossbow and let me tell you this thing is pretty good so crossbow does 280 damage at base and the thing is is that there is a blueprint well there's multiple blueprints but one of them is a tier 4 that makes you go from 280 damage to 490 and it drops from king paka at a three percent rate which is not a very good drop rate to be fair long story short i feel like the crossbow remains relevant for the near entirety of the game even when you're later in the game and you have guns i think it's really useful to have a crossbow on you just to kind of chunk out lower mobs and the ammo is really cheap but 280 damage compared to doing a metal spear which has like what was it 80 damage yeah 80 damage you're doing 200 extra damage or you're doing 200 extra damage at range all for the price of some arrows to me that's a no-brainer now moving on we have the poison crossbow and the fire crossbow now i personally think that these things are actually even better than the torch this is where we get into s tier in my opinion now basically the same thing as the bows but i feel like at this point not only are you doing more damage because you're using your crossbow but you're probably at the point where you can actually afford to maybe maintain this type of play style now venom glands don't really have much use outside of making these arrows from my understanding flame organs actually do have uses outside but in general you probably can afford to buy some organs or farm some organs at this stage in the game i don't think it's that bad personally so that's why these are s tier again they both do a lot of damage and they both also increase your capture rate the poison i can usually proc in about one hit uh for the first shot and then the burning usually procs in about three for uh the flame crossbow uh moving on we have the refined metal spear it's just slightly better it's I think it does 310 damage if i'm not mistaken yes it is 310 again not really huge on it it's it's just all right like maybe i could put it in here max but anything beyond that and i think you lost me it's just okay also we have two ones that i want to go over before i forget and it's the b guard spear and the uh elizabeth spear this is elizabeth this is b guard these guys are like here technically they're good but three percent drop rate and they do 150 damage so while technically they are good i just don't really see a world in which like i've played this game for 300 hours i've never gotten one of these would it be cool to get one of these when you're like level 20 and you're in between the refined metal spear and the metal spear that'd be good you'd get an extra about uh 50 you would about double your damage if you got the metal spear to this spear but 3% drop rate isn't very realistic, and I just don't know, I don't know, I'm not sold on it personally. If, you know, you're lucky, that's cool, but if you're not, then it's kind of just like whatever, in my opinion. Next up, we have the Stun Baton. This is something that I actually should have got to earlier. I think that this is actually a bit of an A, maybe? The reason why I say that is because this does help with captures. It takes about 3 hits to proc it. The downside about it is that you do need to be proc this thing. But, however, it's just like Torch in that aspect. But the problem is, is that there's really only two factors that you can apply shock with, and it's the grenades, this baton, and your pals. So, I think that that's what gets its bonus point. I feel like it's a little bit more out of the way, and at the time that you get it, you're going to be going against harder pals. So, being up and close and personal is a little bit more scary. Considering it is a rare thing to get electric, I think it's okay. I think it's alright. I don't think it's better than the crossbow though moving on we have some cooler stuff coming up we have the uh makeshift handgun to be honest i feel like this is kind of like a maybe a c tier so it does 310 damage i'm quite sure i'm gonna double check that 320 damage the thing is is this requires a high quality power oil and to be honest i've just i have a really hard time justifying spending 10 power oil on a handgun that i'm not going to be really using for very long the makeshift handgun does 320 damage with six shots and i just personally don't know if there's a world in which i would want to go through the trouble of getting high quality power oil in this kind of like mid stage of the game 
and spend it on something that I'll probably use for like two levels maybe. It's just okay in my opinion. It's not great. In terms of value I don't think it's great and also ammo is kind of a pain to get at this stage in the game so I'm not a big fan personally. Next up we have let's get into the grenades. The frag grenade it does 750 damage and it just does damage basically there's no no extra status effect no extra crazy thing it's just 750 base it requires some gunpowder i personally just don't think that this is really worth it in most situations i think it's kind of bad like from a value standpoint it does okay damage but you could make an argument about aoe damage being good but the thing is that there's so much aoe in this game you can use like fox bars for aoe you can use Jolt Hog for AoE, and those are partner skills that require no materials, and those are both pals that you get in very early on in the game. I don't know. One-time use versus using it infinite times on a cooldown, I just, I can't really justify it. No status effect either. Then we get into the other grenades. The other grenades are a little bit of a different story. I do think that the flame grenade gets marked down some points because of the fact that the flame crossbow exists so i'm going to put it in d tier because i don't understand why you would want to use this when you could just use this but who knows then we have the ice grenade this one actually gets bonus points because there's no way to proc ice from any other weapon in the game beyond your pals i believe unless i'm mistaking something there is like certain mines that I think you can use for your base, but there's nothing that you can take on the go from my understanding. You can't build certain things within boss arenas and that includes certain mines and other defenses. So overall, this is a C tier for me, but it's not really like that good. Same thing with this one. This one's the one of the only ones. Actually, I think that this gets a little bit of bonus points because it's the only only one. That you can do for ice but this one gets like a c tier because there's still the stun baton i think that works out overall grenades are okay but the thing is is with the fire grenade there's a better alternative with there's no poison grenade but if there was there would be a better alternative the ice grenade there's no alternative doing this and this you have the stun baton which at this stage in the game isn't the best not the most viable anymore but still you can still use it so that's my take on grenades let's get into the weapons and such now so we have to start out the musket i think that this is garbage it's better than a grenade but it's garbage the problem is is the reload time. in theory this does good damage it does 1100 damage and it hits hard the problem is is how do you reload the thing when reloading takes actually like three seconds and if you roll to dodge an attack, you cancel your own reload. So you just can't like keep up with the pace of the fight. Personally, I would skip this and wait for like the handgun or something or the single shot rifle, which are much better compared to those. So I'm not a big fan of the musket. I'm not sold on it. Now we have the normal handgun. Normal handgun. I think that this is a pretty much a B tier. I don't think it's bad at all. At this stage in the game, you can probably afford a bit of ammo. Uh, you know, going to the volcano and getting some sulfur is not a big deal as much. And I feel like you can justify it. Like, I think that it's a decent weapon. There is a legendary handgun schematic. I don't recall who drops it, but somebody drops it. I think it might be Beacon. I could be wrong. And yeah, I mean, it's fine. It's just all right. It does, uh, I think it's 250 damage with a mag size of eight. Now there is a legendary one. The legendary one makes the damage go all the way up to 625 and a mag size of 16. Now that's pretty good. If you can manage to get that, that's really good. But in general, I think it's just a pretty decent weapon, but I wouldn't say it's anything game breaking. Next up, we have the single shot rifle. This thing I think is a pretty solid A tier. This does really good damage. It kind of fixes the problems that the musket had with the reload time. The reload time is much more manageable now and it does the same amount of damage as a musket would and i believe you just you just kind of can go at it like you shoot one and then you reload in like maybe a second and you continue on it's really not that bad overall i think it's pretty solid no complaints and you're at the stage of the game where i think you can afford this ammo 
Next up, we have Lily Spear. Pretty much the same as most of the spears on this list. I'm going to give it... I mean, it's going to be a bit better than all these other ones because you can actually guarantee it. It does 450 damage, I'm quite sure. I will double check that. I believe it's 450. Yes, it does indeed do 450 damage. So with 450 damage, it's about 140 damage better than the, the refined metal one, which isn't bad. It's just kind of okay. Next up, we have the double barrel shotgun. I think that this lands somewhere in this area right here. I don't think it's insane, but I do think it can pack quite a bit of a punch. And especially if you're using it on like a sleeping monster, you can get some really good damage in. Not as good as it could be, but it's good enough to the point where I think that it can hit pretty heavy. So I think it's at the top of the B tier for me. Next up, we have the sword. Now, the sword is basically Lily Spear with worse range, but the sword can actually be used as a tool to mine stuff. So I'm actually going to put it near the top of B tier. I think that that's a little bit more valid. All right, now we have some of the big hitters. Pump Action Shotgun. This is going at the top of A tier, in my opinion. This thing shreds. It does really good damage. You can fire, I believe it's eight shots before reloading. Um, you know, it's a pump, but still. You got eight mag size. And I just feel like it does its job really, really well. It does 220 damage. It shoots a ton of bullets. And if you barrel stuff something, you can really put a dent in things. And if you can somehow get the best blueprint, you go from 220 damage to 385, which is obviously really good. Next up, we have the Assault Rifle. The Assault Rifle, in my opinion, is going to be the pretty much king of this game. If you can manage to get this thing a Legendary, you will be doing heaps of damage. Uh, at base, it does 320 damage. At best, it goes to 560 with the blueprint. This drops from Blazema, I believe, and the pump action one drops from Suzaku at a 3% drop rate, so it's kind of rare. But overall, this thing shreds a lot, and it's incredibly worth it if you can get your hands on a good blueprint for it. And even if you can't, it still does really good damage. So I think that it's top of S tier for me. And lastly, we have the rocket launcher. Personally, the rocket launcher is very good under one circumstance, which is can you get it to the max blueprint level which i believe this drops from jet rag and that's who it drops from and if you can get it then it's really really good if not it's still good i'd say it's somewhere along this line maybe it does really good damage and if you spec into it like really well then you can do a lot of damage but in general i'd say it's more close to the a tier personally and that is it that is my weapon tier list for power world after about 300 hours I'm by no means saying that this is the gospel, this is the, you know, a fact, but this is just my kind of opinion here. And if you enjoyed and thought this was relevant or useful, make sure to like, comment, and subscribe. And I'll see you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.